Okay. I've created a little experiment here using a 3D program. And you'll see the standard views here. Down here we have the left view, the top view, <coughs> the front view, and a live rendering from the camera's perspective. Now if we go to the top view, we'll see I've created a scene here. Here we have the Earth. And here we have a camera. And I should say that it's a targeted camera, which means up here at the top of this cone, or the base of the cone, I should say, um, there's a target. And if I grab it and move it around, the camera will track its movements. And at the end of the target, I've placed a cylinder which will represent our tether. And in between the camera and the cylinder, I've placed some objects. Now there's several things to note here. Of course, this isn't a scale. We aren't so much concerned with scale as we are relationships here. But from the center of the camera to the target is 1,500 units. If we go over here, target distance close enough, 1500. Um, the cylinder has a radius of 45 units and a length of about 1700. Now I've placed the objects at about 500 units in front of the camera, which is considerably farther away than what we're led to believe the ice crystals or particles or whatever are supposed to be on STS-75. And the each of the objects has a radius of about 80 units. So, if we select our target, and go to the live view, and perform a pan, you see is the tether during the pan will travel a good deal farther than the objects we've placed between it and the camera. Now, if we want to amplify that effect, we go back the objects much closer to the camera and select our target again go back to the live view and you'll notice the effect is even more pronounced the objects barely move whereas the tether travels the width of the frame. So, we go back one more time. And this time, we move our objects all the way up to where the tether is. grab my target here. There we go. And now we perform the experiment one more time. And you'll see that the objects follow the tether. what you see in the first few minutes of the STS-75 video, I think you'll have a hard time concluding that the objects we're seeing are very near to the camera. <laughs>